Welcome once again to the best and greatest podcast of all time. It's the No Class Podcast. So you may notice that we're, I don't know, almost a month late, 20 days late with our last episode. So what's been going on, Matt? Not much. No. We recently took a road trip to Reaper Miniatures, which is in Denton, Texas, just north of Dallas. A lot of fun. Great trip. So that took you 20 days. It took 20 days. Absolutely. I figured you might want to give a shout out to some cool cats you've been hanging out with in Rogers, Arkansas. Oh, yeah. You know it. I got to spend some quality time with the kids. We went to Dave and Buster's, me and my boys, Nate and Jake. And my beautiful wife, who planned the trip, because she's awesome like that. She is pretty awesome. Absolutely. Uh, in not-so-great news, we also had a funeral to go to. We had to drive back to Florida and uh, give Granddad his uh, last spot. And just a quick shout-out to Bill. He was really a help to me on the cons. He used to do some of that stuff back in the day in the beginning of computers and getting those conventions together and having big conventions with lots of people so he could give me some insights on our little cons he really seemed enthused at long con. i'm glad he got to see it i'm you know we're proud of long con yeah he was proud of us yeah he was a cool guy he really he was a unique individual but with that out of the way uh what we had promised you on the last podcast if we had made it on the 15th or whatever. I think that was the last one we should have done before we got our schedule bumped out. That would have been the close out of Red River RPG Con ticket sales. Hooray! Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so, how did it go? Well, eh. <laughs> pretty much. Um, Last year, we had right at 55 people in attendance, give or take, and we've lost a few people that moved or life events that can't make it this year, but we picked up a few people, and we ended up at right around 55 people again, give or take. Yeah, which I don't want to say it's disheartening, but it is kind of disheartening because you look at the long con, that baby's growing. Oh, absolutely. And that, that's the thing that, like, by comparison, well, that's what gave us the uh, uh, the thought that we could do this Booyah Con in Treeport Bossier was, well, look how well we did in Longview. Just think what we'll do in Treeport Bossier. And uh, for whatever reason, the intangibles that are out there, because we've, you know, we love everybody there and the people that have, they've had come out and support us last year, they're great. They're phenomenal. And I believe they've went out and told their friends and Fellow gamers, you know, hey man, there's this great con, da da da, but I guess it just wasn't enough. K sera sera. Indeed. Who knows? Maybe we'll get a really insane rush at the door and we'll have to rethink it. But at the moment, it's not looking good for Red River. But yeah, ticket sales are still open online and at the door. Correct, Amundo. Cool. So, I mean, if there's someone who's been dragging feet or could make up their mind or somebody you want to needle a little bit, you know. But come one or 100, it's still going to be a good time. Don't get us wrong on that. No, Eddie knows. I'm still excited about it. Even if, I mean, we had a good time with 55 people. All of our vendors made money uh, selling what were great products that I bought some of myself. Um, we're really excited about this year. We have special guests we didn't have last year. We've got our panel. Um, so I'm, I'm really excited about the con. Yeah, we're putting it, kind of putting our uh, toes in the pool on this one for the special guests. When we've done our polls and things like that, people have said special guests aren't that important. It's not a sales a mover or whatever you want to say. They don't need special guests to get out. The quality of the games and the quality of the vendors is what they really had said were the most important factors. So we're seeing with this, this is our first test run with special guests, and that'll roll over to the long con too, I'm sure. Absolutely. Um, uh, long con is just getting bigger and better every year, and I don't want to go into that right now. We've got ample time to talk about long con because it's in November, but we're just really excited that uh, 
people really are embracing long con. Yeah. Um, one rises while the other one kind of is staying flat, but yeah. it, it could be much, much worse. They could both be <laughs> yeah sunk. And, and I mean, that was, that was what's crazy. You figure Shreveport, Bossier and the outliers are so large. We just knew that it would, it would go gangbusters and we've pushed and promoted and, and cajoled. But anyway, Whatever the matter, it's just not happening. But we're gonna have a great time at Red River. We had a great time last year. We had a lot of great games, great gamers, great GMs, and it's it's the same thing this year. So Red River's gonna we're gonna have a good time, regardless of what other factors. Yeah, if you went last year and you had a good time, it's gonna be about the exact same. You shouldn't it it shouldn't be much different. Yeah. yeah. We've actually got some cool cooler swag to give away this time as I'm mm-hmm. looking around at the mess of convention stuff that fills my house. We've got really cool, uh, what do you call them? Like the Mardi Gras dice beads, bead necklaces. Mm-hmm. So that'll be like taking the place of your lanyard. We've got uh, custom dice with our logo on it that we're going to be giving out. They look really cool. We've got some incredible raffle prizes. Yeah, and a crap ton of them, and really good prizes, too. Um, if you haven't yet seen the picture, uh, one of our marquee you know, uh, prizes is uh, a, an amazing miniature that by Reaper, which we went to visit recently. And in one of their showcases, they had an assembled, painted version of that miniature that's just breathtakingly beautiful. And so if you want to see what that miniature looks like, and the cool thing is, even if you were like, eh, I'm not, I didn't, you weren't coming out to play, come out and buy a raffle ticket right before raffle time. And you could win a $150 dragon miniature for a buck. You know, our raffle tickets are only a dollar. And it, I mean, it, it, it supports gaming, but also remember all of our conventions that we do, we always have a, I don't know pets the right word, but we have a pet charity. charity. And so uh, last year and this year, it's Camp Rain Man, which is in the Shreveport Bossier area. Uh, it's a cause near and dear to our heart. It's a, a camp for autistic children to get that, that summer camp experience, which is awesome. And so, like, to that end, part of our proceeds and, like, we do dollar re-rolls on our Saturday night games, all those monies uh, go to Camp Rain Man. Yeah, and I'm for our five listeners out there, I don't think this is too uh, – private or anything to say that my son's autistic as are mine and good friends of ours uh tj and leela robishaw uh leela is one of the officers of the rain man uh camp rain man so that's why it's something that hits near and dear to us and something that i think we can all appreciate it if it's not affecting you directly in your family you definitely know someone yeah and this is april so light it up blue everybody yep it is the right month Autism mm-hmm. awareness. Yep. Um, and so, and like uh, last year's long con, uh, there was the camp, not a camp, but a, what were they? They're like a halfway house? Or? Yeah, I'm going to mess it up, but I want to say know. it was Willow Point Center for Boys yeah. out of uh, Tyler, Texas. Right. Troubled teens sort of thing. That was our charity last year. Everybody was super generous. We had a tub that people could throw gaming paraphernalia in for the kids and people just went crazy and we made some other donations and things of sorts. Yeah. We, the con gave them a full set of the fifth edition core rule books. Mm -hmm. Uh, I know you also threw in some dice. I threw in some uh, 3d printed dice towers. Right on. Um, I think TJ and Leela gave some stuff. Uh, talking about Leela again, she gave some copies of her book. Yeah. Uh, I think I'm going to say. Yeah, I mean, so we just appreciate that everybody, you know, it's, if, if, if for no other reason, it's like when I tell people, A, we don't make any money at these cons, it's not about making a buck, but for two is, we just early on said, this, we should be doing something more than just, well, let's give back or help out or whatever. And I'm really pl- proud of the fact that we, you know, we do that. But anyway, enough about that. That's never enough. I hear you, but I don't, I don't know. I feel uncomfortable. I I don't know. For some reason, I don't know. About conventions or about charities? (laughs) Both. (laughs) Well, going back to our Reaper Bones, uh, that is the big raffle prize for Mal Yeah. Yeah. Mal Dracar. Mal Dracar. I saw that. I was looking at some stuff. I saw it on eBay the other day. It was $500 for a paint job. Woo. You have to buy the mini, max mini, really, 
and you have to buy it and send them to them. Wow. And then for $500, they'll give you your custom paint job. What a bargain. Yeah. Or you could get our buddy Tim Flippo, right? Dragon Slayer Miniature Painting Service. But we're on doing Facebook. this one uh, unpainted because that's what people want. We do our little paint party. Mm-hmm. So we've got talented painters coming out to our cons. So Absolutely. I think it'll be a great prize. And we've had people that discover they had no idea before that they were actually quite good Go at painting ahead. miniatures. Yeah, yeah. As a freshman effort, it was really boys got talent. And there's a lot, like I said, we're lucky, we're blessed that a lot of our local gamers are very talented painters, you know. So while we're talking about the cons, a couple more plugs. We got Nord Games on board now. Sweet. For Red River Con. And I think they'll be giving us prize support again for the Long Con. Mm-hmm. And they may actually come out to the Long Con and set up a booth. They're right trying on. to work that out right now. Cool. Um, we've got. They have neat product. Oh, yeah. Lots of great third-party stuff, so it doesn't matter what system you're playing. You can incorporate their stuff into your game. Which is cool. Uh, crit hit decks, crit fumble decks. I love stuff like that. Treasure decks. Mm-hmm. And we've got a lot of it coming. I think those are going to be great prizes, and people oh, are yeah. going to love them. No, I love that stuff. We do have the Frogs coming out to Red River, Frog God Games. They were there last year at Red River, and uh, I bought some stuff off there. And like, I always try to spend a little money with all our vendors, and really it's more about let me find something on the table that I can buy to throw them a bone and show them we appreciate them. But man, I went crazy on Frog God's table because, I mean, it was it was just every bit of it. There was a lot of great stuff. Yeah. And it's funny, I went back to my gaming table and sat down and I was, you know, ooing and on over what I'd bought. And people, they were like, oh, what is that? Oh, that's cool. Where'd you get it? And I pointed to Frog God Games. And at the next break in the game, there was this mass of people that ran over. And anyway, yeah, so I mean... Those guys will be out again. I think uh, Rob uh, is going to be running some, what is it, Chariot Racing and Gladiator. Oh, yeah. A lot of fun. So that's almost the official game of NTRPG. Go check those guys out in June. Yeah. But they'll be out there. They'll be doing some stuff with us. And Bad Mike, of course, from NTRPG mm-hmm. uh, will actually be on scene. And Zach. Mm-hmm. Anyway. Yeah. So we'll wrap up our plugs at this point in the cast and move on to something else. As Matt started before, talking about the little trip to Reaper. Yeah, I've kind of, I don't know, it wasn't like an official thing, but we've gotten lately where like we made a little homage to uh, the home of Robert Howard, you know, the Conan. Cool. Well, even before that, we had another cool road trip. Lake Geneva. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, we've become like all about these little road trips, Lake Geneva, going to Robert Howard's home. Well, now we were like, hey, let's go check out Reaper because it's just down the road in uh, Denton, uh, Texas, Texas, just north of, you know, Dallas. And uh, they're just really cool. I can remember, actually, this is not my first time going there. I went in 1997 and, uh, took a little road trip there and that was before they did tours and it was a different, much smaller facility. It was a smaller company back then, but they were really super cool and gave us a, you know, a quick tour. But nowadays they have an official tour. I think it's Monday through Friday, like twice a day. You got to kind of email them ahead of time. The guy that gave us the tour, John was super nice, very knowledgeable. Um, and I really enjoyed it. Yeah. That kind of makes me think of the, uh, Robert E. Howard. We took that. How long was that drive? Four, four hours? hours four hour one way so it's a very small house as it was back in those days and we had no idea what we were getting into we said yeah. you know we'll probably drive four hours and get this 30 30 minute tour and more like 15 minutes i figured yeah so it was somewhat the same on reaper where we we're like eh, we'll probably drive three hours yeah, it's right at three hours and get a 15 minute tour but that tour was two hours long. Yeah. It was detailed. But, I, and I'll say for my part, you know, your mileage may vary, but it, it was not like a point where at, I was like, oh my God, when's this going to end? I mean, we're, yeah, it was, and in fact, the guy even took us to places that I think the tour normally doesn't go. So, I mean, he really. Behind the scenes access for the long con guys? I know. Well, put your pinky out, you know. We're, we're like pseudo D rate celebrities, dog. Yeah. And uh, as I mentioned on our Facebook, if you mention the long con, when you go to Reaper and do that tour, they will kick you out. <laughs> or they will give you a confused look. Either way, <laughs> it'll be memorable Who? for you. 
and we want to hear all about it. Um, but no, and I mean, I don't, don't let that be the reason you go, but, uh, I mean, on top of the tour is really great at the end of it, of the free tour, they gave us some miniatures, some really cool. I think I posted some pictures on Facebook, but they gave us each a couple of really nice, I mean, they had like minor defects. They didn't pass their extensive quality controls. And I bought some like dollar paints. They're perfectly good paints. Um, they just had been mislabeled. So that's Matt for you. He goes directly to <laughs> what free stuff did he get out of going? <laughs> what are you saying? <laughs> I'm saying let's go back to the very beginning of the tour. And I would say even for those of you that might have significant others that are have no interest in gaming, mm -hmm. they might really get a kick out of this tour. I thought it was really interesting to see how metal minis are made. And they have a plastic extruder, which right at this time they're only making bases, but they're learning the process because China's been making their bones miniatures. But I think they realized with the new tariffs and stuff in place, they didn't go into this. I'm just kind of spitballing that they probably need to learn to be able to make their own here and plus make them in the good old U.S. of A. in Texas. <laughs> Yeah, while we're talking about the plastic, I thought it was really interesting that 3D printing is coming online a lot for them. Oh, yeah. They're not uh, printing out anything yet that you would see on your end, but a lot of the designs, they'll get 3D prints of it and use that for making a mold, just seeing what it would look like when it's actually in this X amount of dimension. So I thought that, since I kind of dabble in the 3D printing thing, I thought that was really interesting. And questions that I didn't ask, I wanted to know if they would eventually have the, the STL files for sale too, like Hero Forge does. Yeah. Cause that way, I mean, yeah, yeah. But I, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's like, I was aware of how they used to make the, 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 the original, what they called them, the greens, which is they would take like a, a wire, I believe the term ligature, but just a mm -hmm. little humanoid form and they would put the green stuff on it. What is the green stuff? Um, there's a two part putty. It's yellow and blue. Yellow and blue make green. You, you knead it together. Science. And, and it begins to harden. So you can shape the, the, the bare bones shape of the creature and then carve away the bits that aren't the creature. And hey, you got your, your initial miniature. And from those, they would make the initial molds and, and blah, blah, blah. So they've been doing that since time immemorial. But now they were saying a lot of these artists just... 3d design the thing now they don't use these there's only they said they only use two artists still that are old school enough that they still use because they don't want to learn the technology uh they still hand carve and mold these initial creatures and adventurers and whatnot yeah, it was really neat yeah and talking about the green stuff uh i'm trying to think what the actual term was that he used but it's like you have once you sculpt it out you have leftovers You'll have your little drips and drabs of green stuff left over, that right. little putty. So anyway, they had collected all that, and they were making this massive treant out of that. So it's like every time you have your little, you know, BB-sized or more uh, putty, you put it on this little figure and kind of sculpt it in, and eventually even your trash turned into something incredible. Which was interesting as a facility, and I'm not... Uh, here I'm fixing to offend one of our five listeners, but yeah, I'm not some hippie or whatever, but I was impressed yeah. by the fact that they were a zero waste facility, you know, and, uh, and, and they're very, very OSHA compliant, which seemed to excite one of us. <laughs> it's Matt, which also, uh, what I was really interested in was they were using the dialysis machines to put paint into the bottles yeah that was kind of neat I, I was like oh yeah but they were using dialysis machines as part of their uh, paint mixing process and bottling which was one thing they made a note a non number of different miniature companies have their own paint line but there's a separate company that makes the paints reaper as far as what they were telling us i believe understood they're the only miniature company that they make their own line of paints in-house yeah, because what Games Warehouse, what a Games Workshop. Workshop would have, Citadel. Yeah, but it's like some other company making exactly. it for them, you know. And uh, the, the Reaper paints really are good paints. Well, they're very interested in their quality. They yeah. want to put their name on a product that's good. They're not sponsoring us yet, but they might have to this. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no. But the lady that was, that's an, an artist that they brought on board to help mix their paints, and she you know, whatever, mixes the pigments and comes up with the names. And I think they even said the staff will sometimes put in a little vote for 
naming a new shade or whatever or something. Yeah. Uh, if you checked out our Facebook uh, for probably Red River, I think had a lot of those, or Matt's personal Facebook page had a lot of the pictures. It was really interesting to see how a metal ingot gets melted down into a liquid, poured into their molds, and then they pull it out of the rubber and boom, there's your figure. Yeah, these galvanized rubber discs. Um, and I like, they do a quick spot quality control right there at the side, you know, at the side of the crucible or whatever. Uh, and then they have some one person that every one of these miniatures goes past that they do the more thorough quality control. Yeah, I thought that was really interesting that there was one final line of defense. Everybody is QCing it along the way. Mm -hmm. Even the guy that puts it into the uh, packaging at the end mm -hmm. can say, no, this one's messed up. But there's one person that they all go to before they even get to the packaging. Yeah, that's, yeah. Which apparently mustn't be a bottleneck. I mean. Yeah. And um, I was impressed with, they have a really system they put in pay place that was kind of neat. For right now, I guess they're doing a fulfillment on the, the most, like, Bones 4. And um, they had, like, a, iPads on shopping carts with scan guns. And they would, like, print out, like, a shopping list of what goes into the box for this particular person's order. And they'd go around scanning. And yeah, it was pretty neat. I mean, they've it, they were talking about... When that young man that was given the tour started with them nine years ago, there were something like 18 employees. Yeah. Now there are 60 employees. So I'm really tickled to see. I've always said support local companies. You know, I'd rather buy products and things from a local company and not some chain or whatever. And I love that a company in Texas, you know, not too far away is prospering and employing people. And I just think that's great. I love that sort of thing. Yeah, it was really cool. And seeing how they were a zero waste facility mm -hmm. you kind of see like the slag coming off the minis or something like that and they go well all this can be remelted mm -hmm. and the metal of it reused and anything that's an impurity gets sent out and gets recycled that way refined and returned so wow. yeah it was really impressive and but you had to figure it must be a good company to work for because like that young man worked there for nine years and some of these other people had worked there for a significant amount of time but when we asked him loyalty hey i mean how hard is it to get a job and he says you either have to get lucky or know somebody and i love the story he told us was he had just graduated high school he'd went there they have a store by the way built into the factory where you can buy their product and other games too he was sitting there playing with his magic cards and a guy walks up and says hey kid want a job and he goes Oh, okay. And he goes, all right, you start in five minutes. And yeah. he's been there nine years, you know. I just love stuff like that. And he's one of the, I'm trying to think what you call it, the casters? When he sounds like a jack of all trades. At given times, he's been a mold maker, a caster, uh, a package guy. I mean, he's been, I think. But he's, he's really gone from the ground level is what I'm saying. Oh, yeah, I know. Yeah. He's, he's come in as somebody off the street and become a craftsman absolutely yeah and and uh but i could i could see why there would be a certain amount of loyalty for one thing going back to the osha part there's all these different things that they've done to be osha compliant but what is osha about the safety of your employees so there's all these things they've put in place to like make sure their hearing isn't damaged or they're not inhaling too much talcum powder or i just was impressed that that's that the employees probably pick up on that that wow they were not just some this isn't some Chinese sweatshop labor <laughs> kind of place. I mean, they're, they, they, yeah, you know, take care of their employees. And then maybe worth the price of admission by itself is the tour of the Reaper gallery at the end. Oh, that was sweet. If you'll see from the pictures, they've got these old dungeon looking doors with the uh, like wrought iron hand grasps and, and they're beautiful glass showcases with a number of their different miniatures, maybe, one of every one they've ever made i think something like that Sounds but they're right. just gorgeously painted to a high dragon slayer level quality yeah it was a lot of named artists have their stuff in there absolutely uh you can once again if you'll see from the pictures i posted not just of like mal Dracar, but there's a uh, um some other ones that i've the gorgeous paint jobs i yeah the one that was pointed out to us as being one of the coolest was there was a figure laying on a bed with a transparent sheet over them. But you remember that's a paint job, so yeah. it's not transparent, but it looks transparent. I mean, that's just, that's some next level stuff right there. Yeah. 
So for all of our artists listening to this that come out to the cons and do our paint contests, I would definitely recommend you check that out. Yeah, I mean, like the end of the tour, just you could get so much inspiration from those paint jobs. And, uh, and it's really neat to know how the miniatures are made. That was just really neat. And it's a free tour. Yeah, my favorite prize. So now we have to think about what's the next trip. Absolutely, yeah. Anybody got some ideas or input, uh, something kind of nerd-centric, geek-centric, whatever, uh, give us some input. And also, if you've got any ideas for things you'd like for us to talk about, like, shut up, go away. We, we don't want that, but, you know. Yeah, you can say it. You can say it. <laughs> Popular vote rules. If you, exactly. We if get we, enough <laughs> shut-ups, we'll go away. <laughs> there you go. Or you can bribe us. Money will shut, shut Hush money right there. But no. But give us some input, you know. Uh, the other thing is talking about our Appendix N book club. Yes, indeed. We've still got to get that rolling, but it's been a really hectic yeah. half of a month or something in here between podcasts. Child visits and bearing beloved family members, and I've been doing a lot of prep work getting ready for Red River, and I'm pretty sure Eddie has too. Not at all. There you go. I love that about you, man. Yeah. But anyway, but uh, so yeah, it's been really hectic. I've been doing a lot of painting and writing and refining on some of my adventures. And I'm trying to think now if we have another podcast coming up before Red River. We probably will because Red River's at the end of the month. So mm -hmm. one more podcast to get hype, and then probably the one after that will be the report of how Red River went. Good things, I'm sure. Good things. So um, come check us out. Come check out our cool vendors. We've got uh, Durthin's Dice Bags. Oh, yeah. Man, his dice bags are, as the kids would say, on fleek. We've got uh, Crystal Elf designs with a lot of, to use the word designs again, lots of uh, geek culture pop items. Right on. Um, mugs, shirts, stickers. Uh geek jewelry like dice necklaces and things which are pretty cool we've got spirits workshop which is new to us yeah i mean what's their story they do paper minis and stuff like that oh, so cool. you can kind of avoid the whole reaper and 3d printed thing and just use paper minis hey you got something to be said for that these are the stand-ups i'm trying to think what the pathfinder was a pathfinder pawns don't start me lying i lie like a rug but fourth edition had the Pogs, oh yeah, little the lay down yeah, discs, yeah, right. And these are the stand ups, right on. Put them in the base and right on, two dimensional. Yeah, we've got Shreveport shaved ice. Cool. Those guys are going to be awesome yeah. because you can get unlimited refills on your beverage for the whole con. Sweet. Think about that one. And do not add alcohol to those. Never. And they'll bring the food right to the table. Oh, They've got what? pizzas and hot dogs. And right. Yeah, I've seen the picture of the hot dogs. They're kind of suggestive. But they're Nathan, so... Mm -mm. <sighs> so this is the last podcast. You guys just heard it here. It all went off the rails. Friendship over. I should be so lucky. <laughs> we'll have our special guests come out, which is uh, Ben Burns with... New Comet. New Comet. New Comet, baby. And Dark Colt. Don't let him fool you. Dark Colt's still going. And uh, Richard LeBlanc of New Big Dragon. And Jonathan Thompson. Right on. Of Battlefield Press. Uh, I'm trying to think of what other vendors we'll have. Like I said, Frog Gods will be there. Yeah. They've got a lot of cool stuff. And we'll have some goodies from Nord Games. Yeah. Uh, our podcast uh, heroes, Two Smart Guys and a Friend, are supposed to be podcasting from location what that's amazing so with any luck they'll get to talk to some of our special guests there too cool. maybe we'll pop in and make fun of them right on point and laugh you know and that's it for this one i think yeah but like i said for those coming to red river we're gonna have some really sweet swag this time around so be there or be somewhere else mm -hmm. bye bye, -bye.